everybody welcome to cake tastic cakes it's jen and i'm going to show you today how i made this really pretty roll cake it's a cinnamon cake with a caramel cream cheese filling and pretty leaf pattern okay so with all like the pumpkin cakes and things out there i thought it might be fun to try something different and i've seen some videos where people make patterns into their roll cakes and I figured, why not give it a try, right? So this is what I came up with. It's pretty versatile, so it's good for any time in fall or really once you learn this recipe, you can make whatever patterns you want in it. And you can kind of change the recipe how you want to, so it's, it's really nice. So, okay, I started with seven tablespoons of butter in my mixer. It's softened to room temperature. And I added three quarters of a cup of powdered sugar to it. I mixed up the butter, as you saw, as I was chatting away. Let it get a little creamy, added my powdered sugar, and now I'm going to add three eggs. And yes, that one egg that rolled away, I did catch it before it fell off the table. So I'm adding my three eggs to it and just letting it mix and mix and mix and mix and mix. Make sure your eggs are also room temperature or it will cause your butter to re-solidify and that's a problem. And this dough that we're making is going to be the dough that you make your patterns out of, okay? So this is what you wanna hang on to should you ever decide to make any kind of pattern. This is where you start. I added a cup of regular old flour to it, just all-purpose flour. Let it mix up, and as you can see, it's already making like a really nice little cake dough out of it. It doesn't have a lot of flavor, because of course I tasted it, but it is sweet and pleasant, and it worked great. <laughs> so if nothing else, hang on to this so you can make your, your next roll cakes look really more special. As you can see, I scraped down my bowl with my spatula, gave it one more little mix, and now I am dividing my portions into five separate bowls. I chose five colors just because I figured that would be nice. And I went with this uh, cinnamon flavored roll cake because I figured it wouldn't be too dark. I wanted the colors to really stand out brightly against it. So now that I got my five little sections, I am adding food coloring to it. This is just regular gel food coloring. I don't use the liquid drops. This is the gel stuff because it just works better without making everything too runny. I mix some red in, I'm mixing some yellow in as you can see, I'm just using a regular old butter knife, whatever I happen to have, and then what you're not seeing is little breaks in between where I wash my knife, and then use it again. So here's some orange now that I'm mixing together, and just make sure you, if when you mix it, you scrape the bottom of your bowl, make sure you get all those little streaks that stick to the side, because when you scoop it into a bag to pipe it, you don't want any little beige spots coming through, or creamy spots. This one is going to be brown, as you can see. And I'm not going for a real dark brown. Um, I figured, you know, when it, once it bakes, it always colors tend to get a little darker anyway, so I wasn't too sure how dark to make it. But I figured that would be good enough. It definitely stands out compared to the regular color. And this is my last color. I added a touch of brown to it and a touch of cobalt blue or uh, cornflower blue if you have it. It comes out more like a mossy color, like a slate color. I guess. And now I'm just piping everything into a bunch of disposable bags that I have. These bags are huge and I cut a little hole, just a teeny, teeny, tiny hole in the tip, pretty much as small as I could do it. And now I'm just piping, or not piping, scooping as much as I can of my batter into my bags. And I did end up with a little bit of extra batter. I guess I could have made a sixth color if I really wanted to, but this is just what I did. So yeah, here you go. Okay, so now I've got my slate colored bagged, I've got some orange bagged, brown, red bagged, and then I'm going to head over to my yellow, and I'll be ready to start. Okay, now that they're bagged, I'm just using this wooden piece of wood, it's a wooden stick or dowel or something that I have, to force the dough down into the bottoms of the bag while trying to make sure the most amount of dough possible reaches the bottom of the bags. And this way I'm going to not have to worry about it gushing out the top or, you know, wasting any when you have a really big bag and you squeeze it. But yeah, there it goes. It's all set. Okay, now I've got a regular old 10 by 13 cookie tray. It is a well-loved cookie tray. I'm covering it with a piece of parchment paper. This is not wax paper. Wax paper is not the same thing, so don't be fooled by it. And I'm just folding down the corners so that they stay sticking up more so it sits a little flatter in the pan. That one side was really, really long and it was bothering me, so I cut it off. So now it just sits a little nicer inside the pan. It's sitting a little flatter on the bottom. 
And once I finally get done fidgeting around with it, I'm going to start drawing. So I'm starting with my slate color first, and I'm going to pipe the stems of the leaves. I'm trying to give space between each one so that it's not going to be too crowded and also trying to make it so that they're going at different angles. I want to keep a nice curve in it because curves are more fun to look at than straight lines sometimes. And yeah, it's not really directional because the way, you know, a cake roll goes, you want it to kind of go in any which way you got. So you can see I made a mistake there, didn't like it, scrape it off. It's no big deal. It's parchment paper, so it just wipes right off. Make sure when you pipe it, you have a good thickness to it, but you don't want it crazy thick, you know, be, be sensible and judge it well. I'm making some of them with branches on them that are going to be more like um, berries or acorn clusters or something like that. And I'm going to take this pattern down halfway through my cookie sheet. I have tried doing this once before. You're going to see a little clip of it actually further on in the video. And it turned out kind of disastrous. So this is what I've learned from it. Make sure you take it down halfway because otherwise you end up with like this nice little gap before you roll it. Or you might, you know, if you don't roll it real tight. And it turns out I'm not a tight roller. I'm using yellow now, the yellow batter to just make some leaf shapes. They're just oval shapes with a little point on them. I'm going over top of the stems, maybe halfway. Here's a red one. You can kind of see I'm making it a jaggedy shape. So change the shapes of them a little bit, change the angles of them, you know, change how far they sit on the stems and make sure you do overlap the stems a little bit. As you can see, I added those yellow berries at the top. Those are more at the end of the stems. And I just did a little outline of red around them just because it makes it more interesting. That leaf has a little bit more of a kick to it. It's a little more of a sassy leaf there. And yeah, I'm just filling it in here and there as I go. So I've got, you know, a few more colors to work with and I don't want to have too much of the same color all grouped together. So I'm trying to space it out. I've got some birch leaves, some, I guess, maybe, I don't know, aspen shaped leaves. I'm going with some maple or maybe oak shaped leaves, you know, I'm trying to mix it up too. So the leaves you make, if you're uncomfortable, make all the same shape. It's not going to matter. You know, symmetry is very pretty. If you feel like getting a little more, more creative with it or a little more out of, you know, your comfort zone with it, try different shapes. And don't forget, just like before, if you make one and you don't like the way it looks, just carefully scrape it off and wipe it off clean with your finger or a little damp paper towel or something. Try it again. You know, it's not going to hurt anything. Now that I have these shapes and these leaves pretty much piped out, I'm going to put them into my freezer for 10 minutes, just like this. So that is going to go into my freezer for 10 minutes. And what I forgot to mention, and I'm so sorry, you know, but hopefully you're watching this first, is after I did all the stems, I put it in the freezer for five minutes so the stems had a chance to set. And then I came back with the other four colors. So I filled it in and I'm like, okay, this looks good, but I kind of wanted some more going on with it. And so I just started putting different colored dots all over the place. So I put some yellow dots all over and then I put some red dots with the yellow dots. And then you're going to see, I'm going to put uh, the other colors to the brown with the dots and the orange. I'm not doing any more of the slate color because I want it to stay unique to the leaf stems. Uh, you could if you want. You could put some little squiggles in between. You don't have to put anything in between. I just thought it gave it more color and made it prettier. And um, what I should have done was brought it down a little lower onto my pan as well. I'm giving a couple little bangs, trying to get any air bubbles I might have out. Put it in the freezer for 10 minutes. Okay, now I'm going to make a meringue basically. Okay, we're going to start the cake batter. I wiped down my mixing bowl and my mixer, my little whip mixer there, with some lemon juice that We'll get rid of any of the fats or oils left over from anything I've made before, especially, you know, the butter. And once it's all dry and clean, I'm going to add four egg yolks, or I'm sorry, egg whites <laughs> into my mixer. And the egg yolks I'm going to put into a separate jar. There it is over there. And I make meringue kind of a lot, you know, I separate eggs. I'm comfortable with it. And darned if, because I think I was recording this, it was just like a nightmare. It was like the yolks were breaking and almost fall, like right there, it almost fell into the bowl. Like, it, I don't know. I guess when people pay attention, you know, that's when you make mistakes. Anyway, I've got my four egg whites in there and I'm just going to start whisking it up. I've got it on a lower medium speed. It's not the lowest speed. It's a little bit higher, 
but it's not going too fast. And now I have a quarter cup of regular white granulated sugar. That's what that little measuring cup is right there. It's a quarter cup. I'm going to end up with a half a cup in this cake altogether, but I'm going to do a half of the half into the egg whites and a half of the half into the egg yolks. So the quarter cup is going to go into the egg whites as it's mixing. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to add a quarter cup right there into my egg yolks. Okay, now while my meringue is mixing up, I'm going to use my hand and start mixing up my egg yolks and the sugar. And this is when I realized that I've been using my mixer a lot for a long time and I've lost all, all of my upper arm strength, I think, because this was killing me, I gotta say. It kind of puts things in perspective when you haven't done it in a long time and you try and you're like, oof. Anyway, as you can see, mix, mix, mixing. It's getting a lighter color. It's kind of nice and creamy now and drizzly. I'm going to check my meringue. As you can see, it's dripping and dropping. So too soft. Keep going. However, you do not want your meringue to get too stiff. You want your cake to be soft and flexible. So you don't want it to get too stiff. Now here you can see it's still a little bit droopy, but we're getting onto the right track. I know this is kind of boring footage, but I wanted to show you the difference here. Okay, this is when I realized it was done. It's making peaks, but those peaks are softly folding over. They're forming nice little hooks, and that's when you're ready to go. Okay, so I'm adding a big scoop of it, you know, you don't have to measure this out, into my egg yolk mixture. And just kind of gently folding it in until it becomes incorporated enough that it's nice and light and creamy. And you won't see any, you know, light colored streaks or dark colored streaks in it. Once you get it to that point, you can add it now into your original big bowl of the meringue, okay? So just scrape your bowl, make sure you get it all in there. That is four tablespoons of melted butter brought to room temperature in that little blue bowl behind it. So you're going to want to have that ready and cooled and ready to go. Meanwhile, I am just folding in the egg yolk mixture into the rest of the meringue mixture. Once that's all done, I'm going to feel my cake, feel my melted butter, make sure it's nice and cool because you don't want to cook it. If your butter is too hot, you could end up starting to cook your batter. You don't want that. You're going to, again, just start folding in your melted butter. Again, just four tablespoons until it's well done. Once you're there, now you're going to start adding your dry ingredients together. I'm going to put three quarters of a cup of regular old flour into my sifter there. I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of baking soda and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder to it. And then I'm going to add a half of teaspoon of cinnamon. This is just ground cinnamon into it. Once you get all that into your sifter, then just stick it over your bowl and go sift, 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 sift. And once you sift it in, in maybe halfway, give it a mix, sift the rest of it in, give it a mix, just fold it in, fold it in. And I apologize, my, my phone ran out of, of room, so I didn't get the rest of me folding it in. I also didn't get me adding the batter to the pattern. So this is the one I had mentioned before that you were gonna see that I messed up on. This is my first attempt that just, it tasted like garbage, like hot trash really. But anyway, you have your pattern that you take out of the freezer and all you're gonna do is gently pipe around it with some of the batter and then put the rest of it in top or in the pan, as you can see. And with a spatula or if you're fancy and you have one like an actual proper scraper or leveler, that would be really nice too. I'm just using a spatula and I'm very carefully just dragging it over so it will cover up the decorations. I'm using a little, my cake tester there to also push some on top of the decorations. You just wanna handle them gently. They, since they've been in the freezer for so long, they really shouldn't move or get distorted or spread or anything like that. However, you wanna be gentle. You don't wanna push it either. Okay, so I'm just kind of spreading around my batter. It makes a nice long thin layer. Try to make it as even as you can. I was just filling in that one corner there because it was feeling a little neglected to me. Once you have it in and you feel like it's nice and even, you're gonna see it kind of sticks to the spatula a little, little bit. I'm gonna start thumping it on the counter. You wanna thump, thump, thump it. Just like if you're making macarons or something like that, you wanna thump it and thump it. This is the actual time when I realized I had, you know, not been recording. So I'm jumping back to the original cake here. Again, I apologize, just follow the same procedure though. 
I'm giving it little shifts, just little ones, because again, you don't want to distort your decorations. I'm giving it some taps. You're going to see a whole mess of air bubbles come to the top. Uh, you can use your cake tester or toothpick or something to kind of pop them and smooth it over, make it a little bit more nice and level. And then you're going to bake it for seven minutes at 375 degrees. It does not uh, get real brown around the edges or anything like that, but you don't want it to. This cake cannot over bake or else it will not fold and it will be dry and it goes in the trash like the first one with the little pumpkins you saw there. Now I put a piece of parchment paper over the back, flipped it over onto a cool cookie sheet. And then while it's still warm, you want to do this while it's still warm. You don't want a chance to really set and lock up. You want to very carefully peel away the paper from the back. And if you do it carefully enough, then you're going to see your beautiful pattern come through and it won't be messed up at all. And it's super cool looking. Like I was so happy. I was like, yay. Cause again, the pumpkin one, big disaster. I just used a different recipe. It didn't work and it, it stuck to the paper and it was just, it was bad. Okay. It was just bad. So I've got a fresh piece of parchment paper now that I put over what's going to be the outside of the cake flip it back over that cookie sheet had time to cool so it didn't hurt me anymore peel off the other layer and then let it cool for a little bit while it's cooling it doesn't take long either because again super thin little cake while it's cooling I'm going to trim off the edges to make them nice and even I'm just following honestly the pattern of my cooling rack so that way I know it's nice and straight and which lines to follow so I cut off the two ends. Um, be aware of which end your pattern is on because you don't want to lose too much of that pattern that you put all that hard work into. Okay, so once again, I'm just trimming off my edges. Make sure they're, you know, as squared off as you can. Putting a new fresh piece of wax paper on it. And you got to make sure you're careful of which end your pattern is on because you want that to be on the outside. So find the blank end, the one without the pattern. Tuck it all up and start rolling. Roll it nice and tight, as tight as you can, and you try to make sure you know your wax paper doesn't get too wrinkly. And when you get to end to the end of it of your roll, there you're going to see the colors start coming through. And this is when I start fighting like crazy with my wax paper, and I just grabbed a towel and folded my wax paper roll into the towel, which held it perfectly, so I didn't need a piece of tape or anything like that. Or I'm sorry, I keep saying wax paper. It's parchment paper. Jeez. Okay, into the refrigerator. It's got to cool for at least an hour. Okay, while that's going on, we're going to make the filling for the cake. So, I'm going to start with a half a cup of heavy cream, heavy whipping cream, and you're going to whip it up until it starts to turn into whipped cream. I was started with the wrong mixer. It was one of those things where I was lazy. I didn't feel like getting the other one out to wash it, and it wasn't working. So, yeah, I had to switch to my whisk mixer. Now I am adding one package of cream cheese. It's eight ounces that have been softened to room temperature. And I'm adding it to the whipped cream just, you know, as you can see, in just little chunks at a time. I'm not just dropping the whole darn brick in there. Giving that a chance to mix up as well. And then I'm going to add a half a cup of caramel sauce. This is just, as you can see, Hershey's ice cream topping caramel sauce. If you want to make your own, go right ahead. I had this in my refrigerator anyway, and yeah, it saved me a little bit of time and effort. Now, once you mix it for a little bit, go ahead and scrape your bowl, of course, get all the caramel and everything that's heavy and settles off the bottom and start mixing up again. We're going to add one more thing to it. It is going to be one cup of powdered sugar. This will help sweeten it, help thicken it a little bit. It still stays a very soft and loose filling. Uh, if I were making this for an actual cake where I had, you know, layers sitting on top of it that were heavy and pushing down on it, I would add more powdered sugar. It's too loose for that kind of a thing. Even in the refrigerator, it does set up after a little while, but not as thick as, you know, you're, you might be used to. Okay, so once again, added my powdered sugar to it, my one cup. I am scraping it one more time. I'm a big believer of scraping my bowls. Going to give it one more little whirl. And then it's going to be ready for the filling. Uh, once your cake has had plenty of time to cool, unwrap it however you have wrapped it. I wrapped it up, as I mentioned before, in the towel and the two pieces of wax paper. And when you open it up, this is just how mine came out. I've seen other videos where they or people have made it and it comes out and just lays down so obediently and perfect. 
maybe I did something wrong. I don't know. So if you if you know, you know, where I might have gone wrong, go ahead and advise me because this is the only second time I've done this. So I'm adding a nice layer on here. Uh, you can see still, again, how loose it is. It's not real thick. Uh, when it comes to these roll cakes, you don't necessarily need a big gob of filling in the center of it. But if you want a big gob of center in it, then you need a thicker filling. It's kind of just that easy. Because once I start rolling, it's going to kind of goosh out the bottom a little bit and off, the, off to the sides. All right, now that I'm happy with my filling, I'm starting my roll. Again, make sure you're rolling on the blank side so that the colorful side is on the outside. I'm rolling it right back into that paper again. I had a, a better time with the tape this time. It actually held for me. I stuck it back in the fridge again for at least an hour. It was actually a couple hours to let the icing set and everything. You see it gushed out the little, bottom a little. But once you take it out, it's beautiful. I'm going to trim off the two ends just because they didn't, you know, handle the journey all that well. It was delicious. I did taste it right there. And yeah, so there you go. You have a really pretty autumn themed cake. You know, Thanksgiving, Halloween, anytime. It's really pretty. It's very tasty. I got to say, the recipe is very nice. And yeah, you'll wow your next audience. So I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe because it does help me out. I've got a ton of other videos out there, so please take a look. And as always, thank you for watching Cake Tastic Cakes.